as you can see, I'm working on Amtrak today. I am so loving this piece. Whenever I work on this piece, I'm, it just makes me happy. I've managed to complete the center square since Monday's video. I think I only had the bottom part. It looked a bit like a, like a tribal smile. So I finished that entire center square and yesterday, the day before, so what was that? losing track of my days. Today's Thursday. I am recording this video on a Thursday because we have more uh, relatives coming later on today, which is kind of nice. My dad and my two aunts are coming for the weekend. So I thought I would get this video recorded and ready to go because I knew I wouldn't have time tomorrow. So today's Thursday. So Wednesday, Tuesday and Wednesday, I worked my way up this side border here. And it's just, you know, two colors, easy pattern to follow. It's uh, It's been a delight, frankly. So this is again Amtrak by Sampler Cove. And apparently the story behind the name has nothing to do with the rail system, the uh, Amtrak rail system. It is apparently a conglomeration of the names of two of her friends. So that's how she came up with the name of this design. And it is apparently a, th a thank you um, for two of her friends. I am stitching this. Now, you'll be proud of me because I actually checked my fabric count. And it is a 25 count even weave in a very, very slight off, off white. Um, on Monday's episode, I asked for people to leave me comments and questions as part of the giveaway ask you know, in order to be entered for the giveaway because I'd like to do a blog post sort of directed at beginners and, you know, what sort of things do you wish that you'd known when you started that took you a while to learn or to figure out what did you find difficult? What are your best sort of tips and tricks for someone who's just starting out? And I'll tell you, you know, the comments and, and questions and responses I've been getting are incredible. Really, really incredible stuff. And certainly more than is, you know, one blog post's worth. So I'm, I'm toying around with the idea of doing a little series of posts and maybe uh, tying that in with a little bit of information on these Friday videos because what better time to talk about you know a bit of information and then be able to show you at the same time so you know obviously lots of people watching this have been stitching for years and years and years and you know uh, most of this information is going to be uh, old knowledge and not something that uh, that you you need to know, but I think that you never know. You might just pick up a new tip or trick. I'm having to do this mirror image. Actually, this one is going to be the same as this one up here. So I'm not even. I'm just going to get rid of my pattern because I'm finding that a bit of a distraction, frankly. So uh, we'll just follow along with what we've got over there, and we should be good to go. Fortunately, when I was stitching this side, I remembered when I got up to here that it switches. As you can see, we go this way and then we go this way. Well, the same thing happens, of course, on all four sides. And I was thinking in my head, oh yeah, just go all the way up. And then I remembered that I have to switch the design halfway up. So fortunately, I caught that before I made an enormous error and had to frog all of that out. So anyways, questions and comments that I've been receiving have been phenomenal. So, you know, basically 
I'm just going to add, try to add in a little bit more information on these Friday videos as we go in the hopes that, you know, people who are watching who are new or nervous about starting, you know, might feel a little more emboldened to, to, to give it a whirl, give it a try, because let's face it, we could, the world could always use more stitchers, don't you think? So somebody wanted to know how they could figure out the size of the fabric count. And so I thought, well, this was a perfect opportunity because I have been saying all along, I, I don't remember, you know, how, what the count is on this, on this fabric. And it's a bit of a mystery because it was such a long time ago that I started it. I knew it was either a 25 or a 20, 28 count. So there's an easy way to check, really. Um, you just take your measuring tape and the, the, what the number means is holes per inch. So if you just count the number of holes that occur in one inch, you'll get your answer. So that's how I was able to calculate that this is a 25 count because there are 25 teeny tiny little holes in one inch all the way across, across one row. That's, sorry, to be clear so that you understand, it's not, you don't count the all the squares, you know, up and down. You just count the holes. Maybe this would help. So start with that, one, two, three, four, five, etc., all the way across the row to the to the inch. So that's how you figure out what the count of your fabric is. And it was a good question because someone had said, you know, what if I receive a bunch of mystery linens and fabrics from a friend and nothing is labeled, how do I know what it is? It's a very simple thing to check and then you know for sure what you are working on. Uh, the other simple question that I can answer easily has to do with, you know, how do I calculate how much fabric I'm going to need? And, you know, what if I want to change the, the, the type of fabric that I'm using uh, that's different than what the pattern calls for? There's a wonderful little tool online called the Cross Stitch Calculator. And it is exactly what it sounds like. It is a calculator that you just plug in all of the information that you have into the different fields and it actually calculates for you the exact size of the piece of fabric that you need. So cross stitch calculator, that's all you have to do is type in a Google search for the cross stitch calculator. And it's pretty self-explanatory how to use it. However, I think my very first blog post will just be a little, um, a little bit of information on, on, on how to use it. I'll sort of walk you through it. See, now I'm, I'm losing my concentration on what I'm doing here. So let's move this over one and we're good to go. So the cross stitch calculator it is, is an incredibly useful tool. Also, when you're calculating the amount of fabric that you need, always remember to add. Now, I like to be generous. I give myself, I allow myself three inches. So that's three inches all the way around your project. So on all four sides of your fabric, you want to have three inches. So what that means is you effectively need to add six inches to your design. So you know, for example, if your design is uh, is four inches wide, you're going to add an extra six inches of fabric. Does that make sense? So if you've got four inches of designs with, you're going to need uh, 10, right? You'll need a piece that's 10 by whatever, because the four inches of your pattern and then three inches here and three inches here. So that's why it's gonna be 10 and not just seven. You don't just add three because you have to remember that you have to, you have to deal with the other side as well. So that was something that, that tripped me up the first couple of times that I cut my own fabric. 
it seems like a simple thing to understand, but if you, it, it's also very easy to miss. Yeah, that cross stitch calculator is incredibly useful. I use it all the time. Very handy little thing. So this is a 25 count even weave. So what's the difference between an even weave and a linen and an Ada? So again, that's a whole other question right there, which deserves a blog post of its own. However, very briefly, Ada is the fabric that has holes that are very similar to this. It's an even weave, so it's a man-made uh, product that we stitch on. Most of us know what Ada looks like, and we usually, the way we stitch it, the holes are bigger, and it's very easy to see how you do the square. And it can be quite a fun fabric to stitch on because you can go quite fast because you, you know, it's, uh, it, it seems to stitch up quite quickly, the larger counts especially. Uh, an even weave is the same in that it is obviously a man-made product and that is why it is even. Uh, even, it's an even weave, which makes sense. And so on an even weave, because you can get the holes smaller and closer together than you can on an Ada. Though, you know, I have seen, I have worked with 18 count Ada, which is lovely, and you, the, the holes are quite small on that as well. But to, to really do the teeny tiny work, these 25 and 28 counts are just lovely. They provide a really clean little square. So I am using one strand of thread, and I'll show you as I come up. If I, let me see what I'm doing here. So, okay, so over one. So there's my the beginning of my cross. And as you can see, I'm just using the four corners of the little box there to make my stitch. So. I come up here, down here, up here, down there, depending on which way I'm going. Some people only ever come up in the same hole and down in the same hole. I tend to travel the way that I'm stitching because I'm quite frugal with my floss. This is one strand of a silk thread and that's it. So if that is what that means when it is one, one over one one strand of silk or thread or floss or DMC or whatever the heck you're using, one strand of it over one fabric thread. That's what one over one means. Two over two means two strands of thread over two threads in the fabric. So if you're stitching on a linen, which is a natural fabric and does not have this sort of even appearance, you can have some, uh, threads of your fabric be thick and some are thin. Uh, there might be little tiny little slubs in the fabric. So for example, I don't know if you can see this very well, but this has a little piece of fluff there. That's just really fluff, but on a piece of linen fabric, that is actually going to be part of your actual piece of fabric. The best way to handle a slub is just stitch right through it. Do not pull them out. Do not cut them out because you will end up with a hole in your fabric. So you just treat them as part of the piece of fabric and you just work around them to the best of your ability. So just generally, that's the difference between Ada, linen, and even weave. And also one over one and two over two. Some people also like to stitch one over two. So that's what I do when I'm stitching on a 40 count fabric. My modern folk embroidery piece is a 40 count piece and also Hoity Toity is on the same 40 count linen and that I am using one strand of thread over two holes in the fabric. So all that would mean, let me just sew in my end here and I'll show you. So one over two would simply be, so if you can see this, one, two holes, one, two. So I would come up here, up here, down here, up here, down here, if that makes sense. Okay, now I can hear my family in the other room, so just give me a moment, let me see what's going on. Okay, disaster averted. 
all seems well, so let's carry on. And I've got a new length of floss loaded and ready to go. So, um, let's see, where were we? We were talking about 1 over 2, 2 over 2, 1 over 2, all of that good stuff. And I think that's it for today on newbie beginner stuff. The other thing that, that most people had to say that I couldn't agree with more is that if it makes you happy, do it. Don't worry about rules or doing it wrong. You'll learn over time what you like and if you prefer bright, vibrant colors over muted, more pale colors, then stitch what you love. I'm loving this design. I always do. Every time I pull this one out, I think, why isn't this done yet? And I, then I think, again, right after I have that thought, I thought, I think, who cares? You love working on it, so just enjoy it. Because frankly, when this one's done, I'll be a little sad. So I should just enjoy it. There are only three colors in this design, as you can see. And as usual, I am using, oh, you know what? I did that. I meant to leave that last one undone. I've been trading blue and red all the way up. So I'm just gonna load up another needle here. Not that one though, that's a big 26. Once you get used to, I use a size 28 needle. Um, I have recently started using those ballpoint needles, the cross stitcher ballpoint needles from Katie from polka dot stitchery.com and the different lengths, if I'm correct about this, the different lengths correspond with the different needles. So a 37 millimeter corresponds with a 28 count needle, a regular needle. 28 is my preferred needle. It's the needle size I use most often. I most likely will not use the ballpoint needle on my really small stuff, the 40 count and this one over one, because the ball, I, I, I'm getting used to sewing in my ends with the ball tip. And I, I've gotten quite handy with doing that on, you know what, I've got one right here, I'll just show you. I've been using it on Ginger Gerald's windmill. So I'll just get my extra floss out of the way. And where is it? So here we go. So as you can see, this is a 36 count linen. So you can see we were talking about linen versus even weave. And you can see that the linen is just a little bit more slubby. Uh, those, the, you know, thick, thick and thin fabric uh, threads and just little bits of extra, uh, you know, flotsam and jetsam, I guess you'd say, in there. And so you just sort of stitch around it and you can see my hand right through it in the back there. So this is the ball tip needle. I'm not sure how well you're going to be able to see that ball tip. But uh, the ball tip, which, what I'm really loving about it is that it doesn't pierce it doesn't pierce the linen, so it doesn't separate the strand. So when you aim for the hole, you get the hole. You don't split the, the linen thread with your needle. And I'm having great success with it on, on up to the 36 count. I used it on the 28 with my snowman design. And now this is a 36 and I'm using it quite successfully. But I haven't been brave enough yet to try it on my, uh, well, on this one, which is the 25 count over one or my 40 count, because I just think my stitches might be a little bit too small to navigate the way, the, the ball tip underneath stopping and starting the way that I like to do it. However, that's not to say it can't be done. That's just me being stubborn. So anyway, neither here nor there. Whoops. Let's get my end in. 
back here. I'm not. I have no idea what you can see on the screen. So, just pay no attention. Pay no attention to the man behind the curtain, and continue. Ugh, it keeps coming out. Keep on stitching. Whatever you're working on, while we sit and have a chat together. There we go. Okay, so now we're ready to go. And I know that this one is on the end of, I think it's the, yeah, one, two, three, four. There we go. Okay, good to go. Oh, look at that. My thread came out again. So the Bargello Tuck stop and start is all well and good, but you have to make sure that you've caught it securely at the back which I obviously hadn't. Now I'm gonna do an extra little tuck because a few of my threads at the back here for some reason are slightly more loose. There, let's try this again. Better, good, okay, so that was a roundabout conversation leading us right back to the size of my needle. This is a 28 needle and for some bizarro reason, stuck to the back of my magnet, I've got a 26, a size 26 needle on there. And when you're really used to a 28, the 26 feels, it feels like a toothpick, which is kind of funny because it's, you know, it's barely perceptible difference between the two size of needles, but your your hands just become so accustomed to what they're used to and so the 26 feels very very large and I again I have no idea how it even got there I so rarely use a 26 size 26 needle it's a bit strange but anyway it's a good thing I guess that I have uh, needle minders since obviously I seem to have needles all over the place all right so I'm going to bring my thread up without finishing that last X and I'm going to park my needle, park my needle over to the side and carry on. Now I have been securing my little tiny, cause I, I've ended here and I have to come back up over here. I am tacking my thread down through the blue, just a couple of stitches at the back before starting that next red block, just to tack it down neatly in the back because the one thing I would like to avoid on my back are knots. I am not overly particular about my back, but it's perfectly okay if you are. Um, I find that the way that I stitch, my back generally tends to be fairly neat and tidy anyways. So I don't get overly concerned about, about it. I don't spend a lot of time thinking about it or trying to plan out my stitching other than the fact that I don't want to carry thread a long way. I don't like to have those loose threads because then the potential for knotting in the back is a lot greater because, well, there's things there are things there to be caught and knotted. So, I told you last week about our boat and the boat had stalled on our way home from a Canada Day party at a neighbor's cottage. And, you know, we had the boat looked at and the mechanic who looked at it said it was a, um, it was because of the heat that a bit of fuel in the line had probably vaporized at leaving the engine, you know, acting like it was out of fuel. And in fact, that was not the case because a week later, uh, it did it again to my husband. And fortunately, fortunately, he was already, uh, docked he was already parked at the dock and he tried starting the engine and it was acting a little funny. So he, instead of taking off, he waited for 10 minutes 
and tested the tested the motor and sure enough it conked out and died so uh, where we dock our boat is directly across from a marina so he went over there and he arranged for someone to look at it and long story short it's the fuel pump we need a new fuel pump for our motor so sounds cheap doesn't it it's not <laughs> just FYI but anyways it's cheaper than a new boat I guess when you when you have a cottage on an island you kind of need a boat so we have been very lucky that my father-in-law has been able to ferry my family back and forth So fortunately, it's all worked out and the boat should be ready on Saturday. Fingers crossed. Make sure I'm not leading myself down the garden path here with my design, my pattern. Looks pretty good. Three more. So today's Thursday and I would, I think my goal for this piece would be, I'd like to finish this border here as well as the gray border that goes around the outside of it so that I have that complete center block finished before moving on to my next whip. And knowing that I managed to complete this one square in a night, uh, it was Monday, was it Monday night or Sunday night? Monday night, I don't remember. Anyways, I posted about it on Facebook that I was gonna stay up really late and try to finish that square and I did it. So that tells me, what am I doing here? That tells me that, you know, surely I can easily finish this before Sunday because on Sunday, I want to get modern my modern folk embroidery sal back out for a couple of nights of work. And I still need to finish my windmill, as you can see. My windmill needs a base. All right. So I need a name for my blog posts. So let me know what you think I should call them because I'd like to do a series of posts. I think that there's enough desire for the information that, you know, I could write a post on how to railroad your thread, for example. Um, you know, simple things like that. And so, and then that's what I could then talk about on Friday. And because we always have new people joining, new people watching, chances are pretty good that, you know, six weeks, two months, we'll cycle around and I'll talk about something again. I'm trying to what am I doing? One, two, three. Is that right? One, two, three. No. What did I do wrong? I did done, done something wrong. Two. I think did I do this wrong? Oh my goodness. All right, I think I'm gonna have to frog something and I'm gonna have to not be talking while I do that. So it's time for me to say goodbye anyways. I'm gonna go and I'm gonna turn this off. Then I'm gonna fix this immediately before I go too far away. I have a feeling the problem might be with this one down below. So I may have a little bit more frogging to do than I expect. I have to, I have to double check. Anyways, that's it for me today. 
Happy Friday for you. I'll see you in the Facebook group, Friday Off The Grid. Happy stitching, happy weekend, and I will see you on Monday for a floss tube update. Have a great weekend. So that I don't leave you in suspense, I'll tell you where my little error is, and it's actually gonna be really easy to fix. It's only in the last few stitches that I did. So you can see um, these guys here. There's one stitch here, two here, and two here. And what I did was, instead of putting two open squares right there, I only did one. So I have to move these two squares over one stitch. Let's see if I can zoom you in a little bit more. There we go. So you can see that. Now where is my needle? There we go. So there should be two holes here instead of one. So I only have to rip out four stitches. That's it. That's not bad. Isn't it pretty? Oh, so beautiful. On Monday, I'll show you the whole thing. Okay, that really is it for me now. Happy stitching.